thank you everyone for joining us today. We are really uh, very impressed that all of you have taken the time uh, to be with us at our special D -E -E DREI talks that we're having in coordination with MemeCon, that's the Middle East Association Managers Conference. And uh, this, uh, these are a series of talks and presentations that we'll be doing over the next few weeks. Uh, in fact, every, every couple of days, there's something very interesting. So I really hope that all of us can join in and support each other. I know we are living in a very socially distant, uh, distant time, but we are virtually close. And I think as a family, if we are together always, we can learn from each other, we can share with each other. So I believe these talks and these sessions that we're having is really going to help each of us. I just saw a video um, online where there was a little video talking about, it's not about me, it's about we. And I think that was a very beautiful message to tell everyone that this pandemic, the only way that we're going to get out of it is if we do it together. I think if we just do it for ourselves, we're not going to get anywhere. So just about this webinar today, it's going to be Dr. George and me in it. I'm going to do a little presentation in the beginning, and then uh, you guys can ask some questions. And the way you can ask questions are putting it in the chat box. So whatever questions you have, just put it in the chat box, uh, box there. Uh, the DREI uh, moderator will check those questions. And then Dr. George is going to actually ask those questions, and we are going to discuss it. Yeah. So please feel free to put your questions there. Uh, kindly note that everyone except Dr. George and me are on mute at this point of time. It's purely to avoid disturbances and uh, noises from the background. All right. Um, so before further ado, I just want to first introduce my uh, respected colleague, uh, Dr. George, who is an international speaker, trainer, and senior consultant at DREI. Dr. George is an international speaker who has a distinguished record of achievements with over 30 years of international training and management experience in the real estate and pharmaceutical industries. He is an accredited real estate trainer in strategies for success for real estate agents, assessments of real estate trends, local market analysis, and marketing techniques. He's a senior consultant here at DREI, the educational arm of the Dubai Land Department, drafting curricula, modifying and updating certification courses, continuous education courses, and special corporate tailored trainings. He's a US National Association of Realtors, that's called NAR, global member, an accredited international trainer and mentor, and awarded the designation of Certified International Property Specialist. Uh, Dr. George is also a fellow Rotarian, just like me, and a life chartered member of the US Republican Task Force. So without further ado, Dr. George, I hand it over to you. Thank you, Jeevan. It's nice to see you again, all of you, especially in this tough time. And like uh, Jeevan said, we're all together. Wherever the weather, we should all move together. And that's what we will do. We're not alone. Solidarities, uh, and of course, we pray together that God will pass this tough time soon and will be in memory real soon. Uh, Jivin, thank you for introducing my, me and uh, allow me to introduce you, all right? But uh, nobody, everybody knows you, so you don't need an introduction anyway, but let me just tell you a few words about you. Mr. DiMello is popularly known as the father of community management in the Middle East. He's a pioneer of the community management industry in the region. An architect by profession, he set up the region's biggest community management company for remark properties, managing some 170 tower and 14,000 homes and the tallest tower in the Middle East. You all know what it is, Burj Khalifa. Um, an author and a U.S. accredited and rare authorized lecturer, he was the first certified community management professionally in the Middle East, earning the world's top educational credentials. In 2011, he received the Community Association Institute's Rising Star Award, and in 2014, the prestigious President's Award in the United States. A successful author with an extremely successful book in Spanish. Si habla espanola, 
Sí, right? señor. <laughs> he is a regular on the international speaking circuit. He has spoken in conferences, workshops around the world. He sits on the U.S. based institutes, board of trustee, and also served as inaugural president of the Middle East chapter. As an entrepreneur, he has several business interests in Dubai, India, Spain, Colombia, U.S., etc. Well done, Jeevan. It's, uh, it's an opportunity to hear from the expert then. Thank you, Dr. I'm not an expert. I think we are all experts. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today is what we're really doing about our situation uh, as it stands with our lives. And so I'm just going to be sharing a PowerPoint presentation so that's easy for us to go through. And uh, Dr. George, can you see it on the screen? Sure, I can. You can okay. remove the slides so we see a full screen. Yeah. Can, you see, can you see the full? Yes. Uh, Yes. All right, great. Thank you very much. So uh, what we're really going to talk about today is what, what are we doing to upgrade ourselves during this pandemic era and how we are preparing for the post-pandemic era. And that's, I think, very important for us. And um, we'll talk a few minutes on this. And then, of course, we'll be open to questions and we are going to discuss it, Dr. George and myself. So the first question I want to ask all of us is what is COVID-19 doing to you and to me? And I think all of us pretty much have the answer to this. Worry, insecurity, stress, frustration. I think all of us have gone through this or are going through this. Now, if we don't take care, this, can turn to anger, desperation, and a breakdown. Unfortunately, in the last few weeks, I've actually seen this happening to friends and colleagues. I've seen it happening to my family members. Uh, my brother lost his job. My sister-in-law lost her job. My sister's getting half a salary cut. So I can even see that happening with my own family members. So I'm sure it's happening everywhere. And this is a time where people are very sensitive, they're very weak. But I believe that we can change this. Now, feelings are neither right nor wrong. So it's, it's actually okay to feel this. It's okay to feel upset, uh, disappointed, worried. It's, it's okay, these are feelings because we're humans. We will feel these things. You can't tell someone, don't feel sad or don't get worried. It is natural. But what we do about it, that's what really matters. Not how we feel about it, but what we do about it. I believe that this is the time for us to take a step back, breathe. If you go for any kind of uh, exercise or any kind of meditation, the first thing they'll tell you is to breathe. So breathe, think, think of the situation we are in and then reinvent. Now this reinvent is a very important word because here is an opportunity which we have never had before really. It's an opportunity for us where we are all on this kind of a pause situation. We can't really do much. We have to stay at home. We have to work from home. We have to learn from home. This is an opportunity for us to really reinvent. Now, it's very interesting to note that a lot of successful companies were actually founded during times of crisis. While a lot of people say, I'm really in a bad situation now, what do I do? But a lot of people in the past and even now have actually founded good companies. If you can just see on the, on the slide here, WhatsApp, Instagram, Uber, Groupon, Dropbox, all of them have formed during the 2007, 2008, 2009 crisis time. At this point of time, there are a lot of companies being built, which we'll hear about maybe in six months, a year or two years time, that have been born during this crisis. These are the people that have thought this through and looked at opportunities that they could find. Maybe we can find some opportunities as well. 
Peter Drucker is, uh, you know, quite a famous um, um, management guru. And he said something which I really like. He said, the greatest danger in times of turbulence is not the turbulence. It is to act with yesterday's logic. In this pandemic, we cannot think like we thought before. This is a new normal. We've got to get used to it. We've got to think differently. We cannot think like we did before. I have personally thought a lot about this and I find there are some amazing opportunities out there for us. And I believe these are the actions that we can take. The first one is education, personal branding, building a network, getting a house in order, fulfillment of our goals and generosity. These are the six actions I believe that we can and must take during this pandemic. Because we don't have much time today, I'm only going to be focusing on the education and personal branding part. And maybe in the future, in another webinar, we can talk about other stuff. Brian Tracy, of course, is a well-known speaker and author. I am a great lover of his books. I had the privilege to meet him when he was here in Dubai. And he said, continuous learning is the minimum requirement for success in any field. We are never too old to learn. Every single day we learn something new. And the more we learn, the better we become. This as simple as that. So in education, I believe there are three things that we can do right now. Upgrade a current skill, learn a new skill, and gather knowledge. So in upgrading a current skill, I'm sure all of us are literally learning new things and upgrading our current skills. I know that Coursera has just stated yesterday that the uptake of their courses has gone up 48%. 48% more courses are being studied or being taken up today than even uh, two months ago. So you can just imagine. Using technologies, I've done a few webinars where people are struggling how to, how to download Zoom. What is Zoom? Nobody is, Zoom has been here for a long time, by the way, but we have just learned about it. So we are using these new technologies. It's a great time for us to learn about Zoom, Teams, Webinar Zoom, Zoho meetings. There are a plethora of uh, applications out there. This is a great time for us to learn about them. Using office, office applications. We use Word, PowerPoint, Excel. But how much do we really know about this? I've been doing course after course to learn about how to use PowerPoint better, how to use Excel, how to use Microsoft Teams. Very powerful software platform, but very few of us know how to use it. This is an opportunity for, for us to learn this because this is going to be the new normal. Even after this pandemic is over, I promise you that people are going to be meeting on Teams or meeting on Zoom they may not necessarily meet in the office. Several people have asked me for meetings a month later and they said, let's meet on Zoom. Then professional development. I'm an architect, I'm a real estate manager. I need to keep abreast of what's happening in my profession. Let me find out. So Community Association Institute is my, uh, is my institute where I learn about real estate management. Um, the International Real Estate Management is the IRM. So if you are an architect, a designer, a real estate person, please keep up with your profession. DREI is one of the best options we have in this part of the world for us to really go and check on what's going on in our profession. Post-graduation, maybe we want to do an MBA or doctorate. We've always wanted to do it. Now is the time. I did this course on LinkedIn Learning, by the way. And in LinkedIn Learning, you get to learn a lot about Microsoft Teams and all those different photography and social media, and you get a certificate. And this certificate then can be shared on our LinkedIn profile. Dr. George, I've got a kind of, I don't know, I, uh, I seem to have got some kind of um, annotation circling. on my screen. Yeah, circling just... around the slide. Did you circle? No. Okay, I don't know why it's circled, but um, it should not okay. be. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to continue. Ah, now it's gone. All right. Great. So then, um, uh, yeah. 
Then I went and I did this course in Mohammed bin Rashid University of Medical Medicine and Health Sciences. This is a free course, by the way, that all of us can do and should do. And this talks about breaking the chain of COVID-19. And here again, you do this course, you get a certificate. I, I ask all of you to do it. It just takes one hour. On the DREI website and on LinkedIn, we've got a lot of very interesting uh, webinars already had. You can see uh, Hiba here with Dr. Ibrahim. There are many of these already posted by DREI. I ask you to go through them. You will learn so much. I have personally learned a lot from this. Things that I never knew. It's there for me to learn it for free. We've got DRI talks coming up. You can see on the left, there'll be more coming on the 5th of May, 6th of May, 7th of May. Please make sure you participate and listen to what's going on there because I think it's going to be something really nice. We talked about upgrading skills here. Now I'm talking about learning a new skill. Many of us wanted to learn a language. For me, it's Spanish because even though I've been involved a lot in Spanish, I'm still not very good at it. So I'm learning Spanish on a daily basis. There are free apps like Duolingo, Babbel, YouTube, any language, maybe Arabic you want to learn, this is a great time. Public speaking. Public speaking is, as you know, a very, very important part of ourselves with, with terms when, when we're talking about business or training or any other kind of uh, uh, profession we are in. And so this is a good time for us to learn about public speaking. Cooking. I know my wife always wanted to learn how to cook, but she's been a career woman all her life and she's never found the time. And having a full time made at home, she never cooked. Now, in the last one month, she has become an amazing cook. Almost every day she's on YouTube learning new recipes and has really bettered herself so much. It's unbelievable. Designing. If you don't know anything about designing, Canva, canva.com, just go there. Very easy for you to design social media posts, design uh, flyers, anything by yourself. Web design, development, SEO, SMM, all these are what we call the jobs of the future. Jobs of the future is something, and I'm going to talk about in the next slides, which is something that we cannot ignore as we go ahead in life. The World Economic Forum has actually talked about all these different skills that are required if you want to get, get better in the future. Digital marketing, social media, digital literacy, videography, graphic design. So even though we might feel, nah, we are too old for this, or this is not what we should be doing, I implore you that maybe this is something we really need to look at. In the last section in education is gathering knowledge, reading nonfiction books, attending webinars like we're doing here and listening to podcasts. Books help you to get in the minds of successful people. Here are some of the great books and there are hundreds of more books. Now, those of you who don't like to uh, read books, you can also go for Audible, which is somebody else is reading the book to you. So you don't have to actually go through the whole book and read it if you, know, if, if you feel sleepy after reading a few pages. There are a lot of apps available which are giving you book summaries. I personally like this app called Blinkist. You pay $89 a year. Now it's available, I think, at half the price. And you can get the entire summary of the book in 15 minutes. Sometimes it's 10 minutes or 12 minutes. Mentorbox is another app. Get Abstract. If you don't like to read or if you feel it's too much to read, please uh, try to get one of these apps. It's going to be really helpful. And my next part of my brief presentation is talking about personal branding. You may have heard this before from many people. You may have seen this on websites. I believe it's very important for all of us to pay heed to this. Robert Kiyosaki, another great author uh, who wrote the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Many of you may have heard of him. I was very fortunate to meet him as well when he came to Dubai. Um, and he said this, if you're not a brand, you are a commodity. This is especially true today when a lot of people are losing their jobs or in the danger of losing their jobs. It's very essential for you to have a personal brand. And I'm going to talk about what that means in very brief. A personal brand is about your story being told by you, being controlled by you and not your story being told by others. 
Now, please understand that a personal brand is very different from a corporate brand. A corporate brand is when you work in your company, your company defines you. But a personal brand is where you are defining yourself. And I have a lot of experience with this because for 15 years, I was working for MR Properties, as many of you know. And because of that, my branding was very synonymous with MR. Of course, I was very proud of it because a lot of people call me the MR guy. But what happened was with that was that I disappeared and the company's branding became me. Once I left MR, I had to rebrand myself. So it is not MR anymore. It's me, even though I'm extremely proud to have worked for such an amazing company. And I still, I'm still very close to that company and MR is still within me and my blood. But I had to build my personal brand. And if you are in the, um, in the danger of losing your job, or you want to upgrade into a newer job, you need to build a personal brand. Now, your personal brand is very closely linked to social media and the digital world around. If we just look at this slide, this was in Jan 2020, we have a population of 7.7 by 5 billion around the world. 67% of those people have a, have a mobile device. 59% of those people have internet penetration and 49% of the world is on social media. It's mind boggling when you think about this. And this is only going to grow exponentially. It's not going to come down. Now, if you see this chart here, we know all about this. Now, this, this slide is uh, a couple of years old, but if you look at these, uh, these stats here, and if you look at these different social media channels, Pinterest, which is about social discovery and, uh, uh, and things like a hobby, Twitter, which is a micro blogging news site, Facebook, which is more friends and family, Instagram, which is all about photographs and millennials and younger people, and LinkedIn, which is business oriented. Just look below to see a couple of years ago, what were their statistics? There were only 70 million users on Pinterest, 560 million users on Twitter, Facebook was 1 billion, Instagram was 150 million and LinkedIn was 240 million. Now look at it today. 320 million on Pinterest, 330 million on Twitter, which has actually come down. It is the only channel that has come down. Facebook is 2.4 billion, Instagram is 1 billion and LinkedIn is 660 million. We cannot ignore it anymore. We cannot say that we are too old for this stuff. This is only for young people. This is only for my children. No, it is for all of us, no matter how old we think we are, because age is only in our mind. And if we are not on social media, we have lost a great audience and opportunity. Now, I'm not saying we have to belong to all the social media channels, but there are four I believe we must. If we are not part of it, we must be part of it today. Things we need to do immediately. We need to register ourselves on this. Okay? We need to secure our URL, or what do you call a uniform resource locator. And I'll tell you what that is about. It's also called a social media handle. We need to create and update our profile. I have seen people who have left their companies three years ago with the same profile that they, they had three years ago online today. And they're looking for jobs. When you are looking for a job or when you want to upgrade your job, the first thing the recruiter will do is go to your LinkedIn profile. And if your LinkedIn profile is outdated, I promise you they're not even going to call you. So you need to update your profile. You need to engage with other people. People are suddenly, as some, someone connects to me on LinkedIn, the first thing to do is say, please help me get a job. I'm looking for a job but you never connected with me before. You don't have a relationship with me. Why should I trust you? So it's important that you build a relationship, even though you're gonna look out for a job maybe after six months, or maybe you're gonna change your profession after one year, now is the time for you to become visible. You gotta tell people who you are. You need to have a handle like at John Smith. So you'll find my handle is at Jeevan DeMello. So you need to have a handle. Sometimes you might not find the handle that you choose. You can choose another handle. 
even if you don't want to be on this social media channel, it's important for you to register so that somebody else cannot register in your name. Please don't wait till the last minute. Do all these things now. Build your personal brand today. So I just want to show you right now um, one of the profiles that I saw, and I just want to show you how typically incomplete a LinkedIn profile is. And I, please forgive me, Mr. Malkani, but this is a very um, well-known person in India, but look at the LinkedIn profile. If you look on top, you'll see his name is, you know, has got some numbers behind. So if you need to find this person, you have to type out that name, find 43B5723. And I'll tell you why this is the problem. Uh, just says the person's designation, doesn't really say any, anything about him or her. Doesn't talk of the capabilities, doesn't talk about achievements, doesn't talk about the services on offer. Now, this is the first thing that potential recruiters, potential business associates. So this is not just for people looking for jobs, by the way. This is for anybody, anyone who's going to looking for business, looking for clients, looking for associates. The first thing they're going to look is LinkedIn profile. Now I'm going to show you my LinkedIn profile just to give you the difference. The first thing you'll see is my name out there. See, that is my social media handle. There are no dots. There are no dashes. There are no numbers. It's clearly Jeevan DeMello. You can find me anywhere. See what I've put there. I've told people specifically who I am. I'm a speaker, author, trainer. This is who I am. It doesn't say I'm the CEO of this company, though I am. I don't say that. It doesn't matter to people. What matters to people is who I am, because this is the type of audience I'm trying to attract. I'm trying to tell people that I'm a speaker, I'm an author, I'm a trainer, I'm a community management expert. That's what I'm trying to do. I have seen the bottom there. I've actually put providing services. Now this is available to everybody. You can go there and you can say, what type of services are you providing? Even if you're a broker or a trainer or any kind of business, fill in that information. When people come there, they know who you are. Then you have something which I call a billboard. This is a great advertising space. Most of the people leave it blue or they put some photograph. This is the time you can really promote yourself. Talk about who you are, what are the services that you provide, and how can people interact with you. So you can see in this LinkedIn profile, compared to the previous one, I'm just going to put the previous one just to show you the difference. What a difference it makes if you just now. This is all about personal branding. Now, I please don't misunderstanding and misunderstand me because a lot of people think personal branding is showing off. It is not showing off. It's telling people who you are. And just before I'm coming to almost the last slide there, and before I uh, end, I just want to talk about LinkedIn in particular, why I'm a great lover of LinkedIn. You have 90 million senior level influencers and 63 million decision makers that use LinkedIn. 92% of foreign 500 companies use LinkedIn. 46% of social media traffic is from LinkedIn and 90% recruiters use. Now, I'm not just saying that LinkedIn is the only uh, channel. I also use uh, Instagram and Twitter and uh, Pinterest and um, Facebook. Each of these channels caters to different type of audiences. But your core uh, about yourself should be present in all these different channels. And when you post, you need to post differently for different channels because you have a different set of audiences. For those of you who are going to be looking for a job or out of a job or need to change a profession, you need to get a proper CV done. Make sure your CV has some key things, who you are, what your key competencies are, what are the key achievements, the technologies. Make sure your CV is ATS compliant, applicant tracking system. So when you are during these, uh, these times of the quarantine, it's a great time for you to upgrade your profile in all these channels, get your house in order with all these documentation so that when you are ready from the post uh, in the post pandemic era, you are ready. So just the key takeaways today, and I'm going to end after this, is education, upgrading your current skill, 
learning a new skill, gathering knowledge, and for personal branding, getting on professional social media, updating your profiles online, and updating your CVs to current formats and requirements. Alvin Toffler, who sadly passed away, is a great futurist, and he said something which I really like. He said the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. And why this is important is because we've learned so many things over the years and we believe that is the right way to go. But what this pandemic has taught us is that we have to unlearn many things and we have to relearn it. Because when this pandemic is going to get over, life as we know it is going to be different. We need to be ready for that different. different. Ultimately, do we want to take a chance or do we want to make a change? And with that, I really want to thank you for being a great audience. Please follow me on LinkedIn or Instagram if you like, or please send me an email. Please follow DREI. It's a great institute. It's been done a lot of work for us and continues to do it. And with this, I'm going to um, open myself to questions and Dr. George and I are going to be chatting briefly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Javen. It was a nice presentation. We appreciate that. And of course, the point that uh, you mentioned at the beginning, if you want to start tomorrow thinking in the same strategies of the yesterday, that will not work for us any longer. Because COVID-19 was a wild card. And if a yes. wild card yes. just happens, you cannot. But you have to rewrite the whole plan. Absolutely. We're open for Thank questions. You. Thank you. Thank you. Many of us we have been caught unaware, right? We've not been used to this. So we have been, we are in a situation now, we've been grappling with all these technologies and different things that we do. But the reality is that once this is over, it's not going to change that much because now nope. that we're used to working from home, a lot of us will continue to work from home. We learn to work from home. We learn uh, technology. We learn uh, what is Zoom. We learn uh, remote working. We learn a lot of things, lots of benefit. One of them is to stay with family. Absolutely. So if there are any questions, please put your questions in the chat box so we, we can, we'll be talking now, Dr. George and myself. Thank you. I'm glad to see many of my friends there as well. Shout out to John Hanna and uh, a lot of and Colonel, Colonel, Colonel Parthasarthi is here. Thank you, sir, for your service. And Heba is here as well. Thank you very much for joining in. Laura as well. I know Ms. Hind, our CEO, our great CEO was there as well. Thank you. So any questions so far? Seems like I have to ask you a question. Okay, you got some questions, okay. Being on the technology, what do you think about how many hours should be spending on reading about how many cases of COVID-19, how many deaths, what's going on and so on. Do you think this is, a, this is really a, a something to build in our future or to uh, build in our depression? Well, it depends on the nature of person you are. I know there are a lot of people who get very depressed when they read these stories. I know one particular person who is um, a person that is close to me has gone almost to a semi-depression. And when I asked him, what do you do every day? He says, the first thing I do every morning is look at the amount of COVID-19 cases that are there, how many people have died, which countries. I said, that's the wrong thing you're doing. Look at the positive side, because if you are going to look at the negative side all the time, uh, you are going to be negative. And we always say that when you're in toxic people, you become toxic, right? So I believe we should look at positive news, look at the uh, things that we can do to improve ourselves. So I never look. In fact, if you ask me how many court cases are there, I can tell you I don't know, because I don't even bother reading it. I'm always reading stuff. Uh, which are related to how can I better myself, productivity tips, how can I work better, what I can do for my family, how to meditate. I'm always looking at positive stuff, never negative stuff. 
What about you, Dr. George? I hate to tell you, I never look at how many cases today. I don't even know how many cases in UAE, how many cases in US. Unfortunately, I hear from my family, and we got like seven members of my family have been uh, tested positive, but thank God they all gone through it with different ages, but they have all gone through, which is a good positive situation that we all look forward. I can see Mr. Burns has his hands up, maybe as a question. If you could maybe put that question in the chat box. Saji? Dr. George, any other questions? I, uh, yeah, I have lots of questions if you want me to ask you. <laughs> I, I, think, I think we have to ask, answer some of the questions or we can discuss it if there are some questions. You spoke about your profile on LinkedIn. And you mentioned that LinkedIn is very professional. You have too many viewers, too many high ranks, and so on. If I really go on LinkedIn and I, ab uh, I update and upgrade my profile continuously, this is not an alarming point for my bosses to think that I am looking for a change and I don't like them anymore or something like that? Absolutely not. I, I don't think so at all. In fact, I encourage my staff to update their LinkedIn profile. I think if you do it suddenly, like suddenly on one day, you do everything and you don't uh, interact with anybody, uh, you've never done LinkedIn before and suddenly on one day you do everything, then it's of course always an issue. But if you do it step by step, it's not a problem at all. And in fact, there is nothing to hide because it is who you are. Obviously, you're not going to put in a LinkedIn that I'm looking for a job and obviously you're not writing those things. But as long as you just update your profile and just, uh, you know, just speak about yourself, speak about your company, speak about the real estate uh, industry. I think that's that's great. In fact, real estate profession, of course, we are, we are from DREI. So if we are all real estate people, I think it's important for us to write about real estate on LinkedIn and social media, because we need to, again, promote positive news. We've got to tell people that the real estate market is vibrant, it's a great time to buy property. I believe it's the, it's the perfect time to buy property. But if all of us have to post that online, that it's a great time to buy property, then it's a good thing. I think uh, David said he has asked a question. I didn't get it. Oh, on yes, the I, can see the, I can see the question. What David, is it? Question. Okay, what is the, I think this is yours, David. When do you see this crisis ending? Is that your question? I think it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, um, I personally do, well, I think this crisis in the way it is right now is going to end pretty soon in terms of uh, as, and I, you can see that what's happening right now with the Dubai lifting the lockdown and people are going to work. My office is also open, just 30% just of people are working. So on that front, I think the crisis is, you know, kind of coming to a close. But I don't believe the, the crisis in the way it is, is going to end anytime soon. I think social distancing will still be very much there. I think we will still be wearing a lot of masks as we go out. I think um, I don't foresee a lot of the... Uh, areas where a lot of people congregate together will open up very soon. And I, I don't think they should, but I think business is picking up already and it is going to rapidly improve. However, the way that we are working from home is not going to change for some time, in my opinion. Even if they open up and we have to go out or we can go out, we have to keep our precautions. We don't want to have another pandemic. We want Absolutely. to keep this one safely. So um, there's no timelines, unfortunately, but uh, we all uh, look forward to normal situation. The bad thing to say, guys, today, um, it is not going to be the same. Right. It's not the same the way I think it's not uh, normal. No, no, no. It's not going to be the same to approach the, uh, the situation. Today, we have learned how to use technology, how to stay home, how to work remote, how to do this and this and this. It's going to stay for some time. We're going to have more um, learning online than ever. We're going to have drones to do deliveries. Uh, we're going to have um, uh, uh, online retails. We're going to have lots of e-commerce, not like before. One thing that you should also expect after this is, is, is ending, 
companies will not really be encouraged to have um, big overhead. So we have to look for something called freelancers. So freelancer Absolutely. situation will be in the, in, in, in the demand. Uh, we Absolutely. started. Yeah. The government yeah, has... I just want to talk about, that's a very important point you brought up to Joel, because I want to talk about what we call the gig economy, the gig economy. So everybody is now doing a lot of stuff uh, that they never thought, like designing things, they're charging for designing, uh, writing articles. So all these people are doing gigs and the Dubai government has have got something called the trader license. I don't think many people know about this. A trader license, which is different from a trade license. A trader license is when an individual can get an, uh, a license to perform these freelance activities. I've got a trader license as well. So please look out for that because with this, you can legitimately earn from other businesses besides your own work. Um, uh, Laura, I think there's a question. Sorry, I'm suddenly seeing a lot of questions coming up. So I don't know if you can see them, Dr. George. I, the last one I saw is from uh, David. Okay, so I can see some questions. I'm going to ask those questions. Go ahead. So Go ahead. I'm going to ask you, the, Dr. George, is where do you think, this is from Laura. So where do you think Dubai is heading with the new way of doing business? Uh, where oh, is we... that from David? I don't know who is that from. It's from either David or Laura. And it says, so uh, do you, where do you think is Dubai heading with the new way of doing business? Well, we are doing business right now, as a matter of fact. That means that's the new way. We can work remotely. We can really have lots of courses online. We can start to do something with, uh, with freelancers, right? And uh, at the same time, when things come to normal, you, you don't have to panic when they ask you to wear a mask. There's nothing wrong with that. You're protecting yourself, your loved ones, your colleagues, and you can save lives as well. So it's nothing wrong with that. If you remember 1917, we, they wore masks for four years. Exactly. I hope, I hope you don't have to do that. Okay, here's another question which was asked earlier. I think this is by Johnny. What is the best time to apply and month when it comes, when it comes for job seeking? Usually people say that these few months, no hiring would be going on as we know that people are desperate looking for jobs because they're being removed for no reason. So what is the best time in month to apply? Time as in morning or afternoon? Okay, yes, I know a lot of people maybe may have lost their jobs. A lot of people are taking a pay cut, but I, I can tell you that a lot of companies are hiring because people are looking at the opportunities today of getting good talent. A uh, lot of good people available in the market. So there are companies who are actually looking for good, good quality staff. But here again, it's very important for you to be on social media because when these people are looking for jobs, where are they looking? They're looking at LinkedIn or they're going to a talent agency and that talent agency is looking at LinkedIn. So therefore, um, please update your profiles. Please update your CVs so that you make sure they're ATS compliant and you're writing things about your qualifications. What have you done? Your specific skills. Uh, if you don't know what ATS compliance is, do a Google search, find out what ATS compliance. But I can tell you there are many companies hiring. Though they will hire maybe for a, you know, a, a lesser salary than before, but they are hiring. Freelancers, many of them are hiring right now. Even the government is promoting that. They said, if you lose your job, we can get you a temporary job for three to six months. And then you go back when things are better. All right? So it's there. I see a there question. Is... Oh, sorry, go ahead, doctor. There is a question. What advice do you have for property advisors working in brokerages where most of us are on a commission basis only. I know, do we stay motivated and positive in these difficult times? Well, difficult times are challenging times. There's always some people who are looking forward to get business. They always are looking for something that is a, a chance, a good chance, a good price, a good location, whatever. So yes, we do have some clients. But again, let's look at Tesla and look at the car manufactured companies. What do they do now? Ventilators. Why? Because they are focusing on the needs of the customers. So well, let's find out what do they need, what our clients are in need, and that's what we should really be vigilant and privileged to it. 
I, I do agree, Dr. George. And I just want to say that I think it was Warren Buffett who said, you know, invest when the market is down, not when, it, when the market is up. Uh, today, there are a lot of things that we can do. Uh, I wouldn't say to take advantage of the situation, but to take advantages of the opportunities we have. Property prices are in a very good state right now. This I, I said in the beginning, it's the best time to buy. I was talking to a broker just a few days ago and he said, sir, why don't you buy property now? You'll get some great deals. And I know someone who has actually bought 10 villas. This is just about two weeks ago, 10 villas. He got it at a very good price because people are willing to sell. People are willing to negotiate. Uh, renters, uh, landlords are willing to renegotiate with their tenants. Here is an opportunity for brokers to renegotiate, uh, renegotiate, renegotiate their rents. To, to talk uh, to their customers, give them opportunities, and also what other work that you can do besides your normal brokerage activities. You have to reinvent yourself. You don't have a choice. If you just follow the same profession that you're in, then you're losing out. But if you continue to reinvent, to think of what, what else you can do, and if you can't do anything else, now's the time for you to study, to upgrade yourself. There is a question for you, Jivan. Someone is asking, what's exactly a trader license and how can he get it? Trader license is uh, given by the Dubai, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, DED, Dubai Economic Department. Uh, you can go to the, you can just go online, by the way, uh, I think to the DED website. Uh, and you can, uh, previously it used to be, you had to go to physically to them. Uh, I actually went myself, it used to be called a DED cafe. Now you can actually do it online and you can uh, just select the activities that you want. And these activities range from social media to writing, to designing, to stitching. I mean, they've got a lot of activities. Select the activities as you want, fill up the form, literally fill up the form, give your Emirates ID card. And I think previously they, had, they would issue it in person within about one hour, within one hour, because I got my license within one hour. But you can do it online, and I think they can deliver it to online. It's an e-trader uh, license. Thank you, Jim. Any other uh, questions? By the way, I also want to add that uh, the government has uh, cut down a lot of the um, license fees. Uh, I, I know there's a general license that used to cost 3,000 dirhams. It is now 250 dirhams. It just came out in the newspapers two days ago. If you need any Thank more information on this, please send me an email, and I can give you all the details. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Sounds great. Any further questions? Uh, there is, um, there are a couple of, there's a question by Colonel uh, Partha and he asks, uh, the new normal will bring more stress on effective communications as one will be traveling less and be more on video calls. What is your view on the same? I 100% agree. Communication was ev always important, but I think communication today has become even more important because now we are communicating virtually. Previously, you had to go for one-on-one -on -one meeting, the focus was on your dressing and you know, your body language. Today, the focus is also on your body language, but in your communication skills on how you use technology, how you can convince a customer from long distance. Now, I believe this is a good opportunity because it opens up the, your audience to a global, to a global audience. Because if you can sell to someone locally in Dubai via video conferencing, you could sell to someone who's in the United States or India or Pakistan or any part of the world through video conferencing. So communication skills are extremely, extremely important. Uh, I think we've got time for maybe just one or two last questions before we end. Dr. George, anything from your side? Um, just, a, just a comment that today, uh, if you remember, you have been in the uh, risk management when uh, we had an incident in uh, Burj Khalifa, right? Yes. So can you tell us what is risk management today? <laughs> Okay, that's a completely separate webinar. I know, I know. <laughs> Just three but, words. But, yeah, but, but I think risk management is planning for something that may not happen. And what happened with, with the fire in downtown uh, a few years ago on the mid midnight of 2015, which unfortunately, and now of course, fortunately, I was there and in part of it and 
We rescued more than 3,000 people thanks, thanks to the great leadership of MR and the Dubai government and you know, the local authorities and the police. We are truly blessed to live in this country. I've said this before and I truly mean it. This is the place that I would want to live, especially during a crisis. This is the country I want to live in because the local authorities have, have got extreme crisis management plans. They know what's to be done, but we need to promote crisis management in our own lives. For example, don't wait till something goes wrong. Don't wait till you lose your job or don't wait till you lose your business. Build your contingency plan today. Plan for the risk today. So, real, so risk management is managing those risks, assuming they will not happen, but thinking they will happen. What happens if you lose your job? What Pretty happens if something, uh, if, if, if something catches fire? What happens if you lose your documents? You got to prepare for this. I always believe is hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. Yes, you're absolutely correct. The crisis has teaches us lots of things. Uh, There's lots of many other issues than just looking into uh, uh, quarterly profits, right? And if you don't learn from this lesson, like Jim and I've said, if you don't learn from this lesson, you'll not only lose benefit and profit, but we we'll lose our souls as well. Thank you Any very much. Guys, a question. It looks like I have a question here. Not a question, just a comment to say, thank you for every information and informative session. Really enjoyed it and looking forward to hear more from you both. Thanks a million, Hiba, Hiba Jab. Thanks. Oh, thanks, Hiba. Hiba has done some amazing webinars as well, which I ask you to please go through the uh, website or through the LinkedIn profile and you see those uh, webinars there that she's done with Dr. Ibrahim. Uh, we, are, we are out of time, so Dr. George, with your permission and with DREI's permission, we will end the session for today. I just want to tell you that, uh, please, if you got any feedback, if you like the session, or even if you didn't like it, please let us know for us to improve. Uh, DREI is here to support our real estate fraternity. Uh, we need to support our great institute, our, our CEO, uh, who is really... Uh, taking us forward in this during this difficult time. We will be having many webinars going forward. I'll be moderating some. Dr. George will be moderating some. Uh, there will be other webinars for other aspects of real estate. Uh, and without further ado, I will bid you farewell, Dr. George. Uh, last Thanks word with you. Million. Thanks a million. We appreciate your participation, guys. Please come closer to us, don't be shy. Let us know what we can do to assist, to help, and to live together to, uh, to overgo this pandemic crisis. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care.